everybody, it's Lon Seibin here with the Sony Vio Fit 14-inch notebook. This is kind of a middle-of-the-road notebook computer from Sony. It's uh, you know not the highest end out there, but it's also not in the bargain bin either. But let's take a closer look at the hardware. We're going to talk more about hardware and performance as it relates to this computer uh, more than we're going to talk about Windows 8, which uh, I'm still uh, not too crazy about. Uh, on the left-hand side of the unit, you have uh, gigabit Ethernet. Uh, HDMI output for an HDTV or a monitor. You have two USB 3.0 ports on there. Uh, you have a microphone in jack and a headphone jack. Uh, in the middle you have a uh, SD card slot and on the other side you have two USB 2.0 slots and uh, a uh, DVD uh, drive. It's a burner and a reader so you can watch some movies. Not Blu-rays but you can watch uh, movies on it. Um, it is a touch screen which they remind you of with this sticker here that does not come off very easily. Uh, and it's pretty responsive and fluid. I found that uh, you know my, my touch on the screen is really uh, very uh, uh, reactive to uh, when I do touch the screen. It does get gunked up with fingerprints and stuff like your iPad would, so um, you just want to keep that in mind as you're using it. Uh, the one thing that I um, found a little troubling with it is that, uh, oops, we're going to show you this Kerbal Space Program in a minute, um, and it's hard to see you know with, uh, with, with just shooting a camera at it, but the uh, the touch layer at, takes away some brightness from the screen and it also reduces uh, probably some of the sharpness of the display because you are putting something over the screen which you would normally not have on a non-touch sensitive computer. So uh, the display wasn't all that great to me but I should add that I am a Mac person so you can abuse me in the comments if you will <laughs> um, but uh, it's certainly not up to that standard and I think the problem is the fact that you've got this layer, this touch layer over it. Uh, and you can certainly uh, see some of those uh, some of those touch sensitive areas if you have the light going a certain way. The screen is very reflective, as you can see. Uh, it's picking up the light bulb here and everything else. But um, so that's uh, just something to keep in mind there. The thing that I really didn't like about it uh, is the touchpad here. It's really um, not very good. Uh, and it's funny because the the touch screen is so good and so precise, and the touchpad is the opposite. It's really bad. In fact, if you you know put two fingers on it. Uh, it gets all confused, you know. On the on the Mac, they've been able to figure out how to determine where uh, each what you're intending to do, and that's not something they've been able to do here. So while you can scroll with two fingers, and unfortunately it scrolls backwards, and there's no way to make it scroll forwards, um, you can't. Uh, it, it gets really confused if you maybe rest your thumb holding the mouse button down while trying to drag something. So you need to um, kind of change how you might work if you're used to using another uh, brand of computer that has a little bit more of a multi-touch surface, which this thing um, this thing lacks. Horsepower is pretty good. It is a uh, i7 processor. In fact, it's one of the newer uh, mobile processors from Intel, so it's got the latest and greatest. It's a dual core uh, 2 gigahertz i7, and uh, that's a nice uh, feature because it really does, I, I think it does give you the performance in areas that you would use this computer for, especially email, web browsing. Uh, Chrome runs really nicely on this. In fact, I was impressed with how uh, responsive my Gmail felt. In fact, it felt a little bit better than my Mac did as far as its responsiveness. However, the mouse is so bad on this thing, it uh, kind of killed it for me. But uh, So that worked really well. Web browsing, like I said, is, is, is pretty good on it. And I would imagine you know, productivity apps and doing uh, you know, PowerPoints and that sort of thing work really well. It has uh, the default uh, Intel 4000 graphics processor on board, which isn't horrible. Uh, but it isn't really good for gaming, and I'll show you uh, the Kerbal Space Program here in a minute, so you can get a sense as to you know a game that's not really taxing hardware to the max uh, doesn't really run too well. So if you're you know you have a gamer in your life that you might be buying a notebook for, this one's probably not going to do it unless they're running you know some of those Windows 8 tablety games, you know with the uh, the touch the touch games and the 2D kind of thing. But uh, retro games would probably work fine. But uh, all the newer stuff really is not what you would buy. Uh, this computer for. So let's take a look though at Kerbal and you can get a sense as to uh, how it uh, handles gaming even if you uh, want to give it a shot. So I've uh, preloaded it. By the way the computer has uh, 8 gigs of RAM which is nice so you've got um, it's nice to have some memory on there. A little out of focus here. Let's see if we can get the camera. There we go. Um, and again I'm not streaming this through my capture board because I want to really show you how it runs without any additional uh, stuff bothering it. So you know the menu works okay. Um, but we'll go load up our, our mission here, and you can just get a feel for uh, how it works. And you can see, by the way, that that uh, the touch area kind of reflects back here. And that's more on the camera than it is in my site here, but uh, you can kind of see those little grids there sometimes if you're in the wrong light. Um, so we'll just go into our little space center here um, and uh, load it up. Now, I've turned down the uh, detail settings on this also, so uh, it's really, you know, not, it shouldn't be pushing it too hard. It's just not 
uh, very good at at uh, doing some of the high-end gaming stuff. So we'll just load up a uh, one of the Kerbal stock uh, rockets here. This is a great space game. If you have kids, by the way, this is a or no kids or are a kid <laughs> or want to be a kid again. This is a really really fun uh, way to to kind of uh, learn uh, orbital mechanics and physics and all that kind of fun stuff. It's really uh, really a neat thing. So. Um, you know, so it, it does okay, you know, but when you really get into the game where, where there's a lot going on, where it's uh, doing a lot of uh, you know, huge landscapes and that kind of thing, it takes a little bit of time. So let's take a little break here and we'll come back for launch. All right, so here we go. We are going to launch our rocket here. And um, as you can see, it's really stuttery. And, you know, this is not really, a, again, a gaming laptop, so just keep that in mind. But, um, you know, it, it'll run the game, it just won't run it very well. So I, I would say, you know, from a gaming perspective, uh, this is probably not the uh, computer for you, but uh, for you know for light duty work, it's it, it's certainly adequate. Uh, it has uh, decent battery life. I was getting you know two to three to four hours somewhere in that range, depending on what I was doing with it. Obviously, if you're running uh, the Kerbal Space Program or doing video editing, your battery life will be less than uh, just basic web browsing. But the, it does have the new Intel low power chips on board. Uh, the keyboard feels okay. It's a little squishy. Um, but beyond that, it's uh, it's not too bad. So you know, it's it's a decent middle of the road Windows laptop. It is a commodity feeling kind of computer. It doesn't really have anything that feels very unique. Um, but if you're in the market for a middle of the road Windows machine, it does have uh, adequate processing power for some of those productivity applications, just not for gaming. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.